Hello. If you're able to, please close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Relax your shoulders and clench your jaw. Take another deep breath in. And another breath out. You can open your eyes now. My name is David and welcome to Mindful Moments. How are you today? I hope you're well. I'm very well. I'm in the middle of one of those weeks where it's what I call, it's what I call a get it done week. As in, I just got to get it done. Everything that's going on, I've just got to get it done. Can't think too hard about it. I know what needs to be done. I just have to do it. And so I am. And everything is going well. Everything is being done. So I feel very pleased with myself. Very happy. Even though the things I'm doing aren't the most enjoyable, they're necessary. And there is a specific kind of happiness that comes from taking care of the necessary things. And I'm feeling that right now. So that's good. That's great. And getting things done is exactly what I want to talk about today. I'm wasting no time. Today, I want to talk about turning can't be bothered into might as well. Have you ever felt that you can't be bothered to do something? I regularly feel that I cannot be bothered to do something. And I'm not talking about things that I can't do right now, things that aren't convenient, things that I have a reason to not do. This isn't a question of ability, it's a question of volition. I can't be bothered to do this. I could do it right now, but I can't be bothered to do this. Generally, I feel that about, I probably say as much as anyone else does. I don't regularly feel like I can't be bothered to do things, but sometimes I really can't be bothered to do things. But I was thinking about not being bothered and how it's made such a huge difference to my life in recent times. I'd say in the last year, really. I've really tried to switch how I think about things from I can't be bothered to might as well. Might as well do this now. Something that arises that I can't really be bothered to do. And I think I might as well take care of this now. And in the moment, stop that feeling of not being bothered. Actually take care of the thing that's in front of me. And the impact of that over time and in the many ways that I'm doing it has been really huge, has been really huge. And it's made such a positive difference to me. I realized it today when I woke up and went over to the sink and the sink was empty. And one of the things that sometimes I before thought can't be bothered to do was do the washing up. I don't like waking up and there being dishes in the sink, really don't. But I got into a real habit in the first half of last year of not being bothered to do the dishes before I went to bed. I just thought, you know what? I'll just do it whenever. And most often when I feel like I can't be bothered to do things, it is things or they are things that only affect me, really. Uh, not doing the dishes, not doing the dishes and things like that. It's like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to have to do the dishes, fine. But generally, I'm not going to get in trouble. I don't know my parents, so my parents are going to tell me off. No one's going to tell me off for it. I just can't be bothered to do it right now. But when I can be bothered to do the dishes, I feel much better. I love waking up and there being an empty sink. The first task I have to take care of isn't doing the dishes. So applying that to things across my life and thinking I might as well has been a real life changer. And the reason I specify might as well, not I should do this, because I could be saying switching from can't be bothered to I should do this. But that's the whole problem. The problem is I should do this. And that's what I struggle with. The feeling of obligation is what makes me feel like I can't be bothered. But the thing is, I don't necessarily even have to do it happily. <laughs> I just have to get it done. I just have to do it. So sometimes switching from I can't be bothered to my as well is more than good enough because it means that things get taken care of. And then eventually feeling like I should do this isn't really a problem. I'm in a really nice place now where when I feel like I should do this, I then am able to just act on it because I've built the habit of just acting on that thought 
and it no longer feels obligatory. It feels like something I want to do. I should do it, so I will do it. That's how it feels. But at first, all it has to be is turning I can't be bothered into I might as well. Speaking of not feeling bothered, isn't it interesting that whenever you feel that you can't be bothered to do something, it's at a time where you actually have an opportune moment to do that thing. I don't think I can't be bothered to do this when I'm legitimately busy or when I legitimately can't do something. I always think I can't be bothered when I could do it right now. I just don't really want to. Which ironically makes it the perfect time to actually just take care of that thing. Have you ever been in a situation where you've taken loads of stuff out of your wardrobe or your drawers because you're looking for something or you want a specific outfit and then you've got the clothes lying on your bed and the clothes have to go back in the wardrobe or back in the drawer? I could fold these clothes properly and put them back, but I can't be bothered. I'm just going to shove them in. And then eventually the clothes are a mess and it's harder to find the thing and they're all disorganized. And eventually I will have to fold those clothes. And if I'd been bothered in the first place... <laughs> I wouldn't have to fold these clothes now. If at the time I have to fold the clothes, I just think I might as well. I might as well fold the clothes. And I fold them. The next time I go to get my clothes, I'm going to be pleased about it. Every time I turn and I can't be bothered into uh, I might as well, my future self is happy for it. I never regret turning, I can't be bothered into, I might as well. Because ultimately, those are all things that will benefit me in future. And being able to act on that thought and change it from, I can't be bothered into, I might as well, is really a sign that I care about my future self. It's a sign that I'm actually really invested in my own betterment. I've spoken before about how I really feel like discipline is one of the ultimate forms of self-care. But even in this case, this is one of the smaller forms of self-care in that I care about myself in the future. This is actually genuinely a minor inconvenience to me now that could become a bigger inconvenience if it carries on over time. So I'm actually just going to stop it here. And as I said, it's the sense of obligation that makes things difficult to carry out, especially when there are so many, there are so many things like folding clothes, washing dishes, those tiny things that stack up over a day to make things difficult, those mini tasks that all add up. But you never regret turning, I can't be bothered, into I might as well. You never ever do. And it doesn't have to be the case that I'm happy about it, that I'm happy about the obligation. I just have to do it. I just have to get it done. So it doesn't have to be, I should do this and I will do this with a pep in my step. It can just be, I can't be bothered, but I might as well. And that is more than enough. If I manage to act on that, I've done myself a huge favor. And I like huge favors. I deserve huge favors for myself because I care very much. And this is something that translates across my whole life. I'm very fortunate in that I have great influences in this regard. My parents, one of the things they've always said to me is if you're going to do something, do it properly. I used to, when I was younger, use that as an excuse to not do anything. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do it properly, so I won't do it. But that, <laughs> that was not the message. I know when I know that there's something that I need to do and I know it's within my capability to do it. I, yeah, I care about myself enough that it should be okay for me to act on that. It should feel good for me to act on that. When I started going to the gym, I, when I went, when I used to go with one of my really close friends, we're still very close friends. We just don't go to the gym anymore, not together. But when we used to go together, have you ever been in a gym session where you're counting an amount of reps or something of, of something or you're counting the amount of something that you're doing and you lose track happens when you know it gets later in the session or when you're just not concentrating properly and he was really good with always saying if you've lost track go for the lower number so say I'm trying to do 10 reps of something 10 repetitions of something and I've lost track and I was like I can't remember if I'm at six or seven he'd say go from six all things like that I would sign whatever. And again, as I said, a lot of these things are things that only impact me. They only impact the, if I didn't, if I'd start, if I'd gone from seven, wouldn't have impacted him. It would, wouldn't have been, you know, wouldn't have been an issue for him. But for me, just the discipline of going from the lower number and pushing myself that a little bit harder, just the desire to do things properly because I'm doing them 
and taking advantage of the opportunity in front of me to turn, can't be bothered into, I might as well. Pays dividends in the future. As I said, every time you turn, can't be bothered into, might as well. You're doing yourself a favor. When I look at the fact that my sink is clear, when I look at the folded clothes in the wardrobe, when I look at the progress I made in the gym, I always feel pleased about the fact that I turn can't be bothered into might as well. Even with this podcast, I edit in chunks because I edit the sound, the visuals and the subtitles all myself. And it's, I can't do all of those things in one sitting. I kind of block days off to do separate things. And sometimes I'll, I'll tell myself, I'm going to edit until halfway through the podcast and I'm going to leave it for today. And it just so happens that halfway through is, let's say, 8 minutes, 45 seconds. But that last 15 seconds is staring at me and I'm staring at that last 15 seconds to make it around 9 minutes. I could do that last 15 seconds. I could. But I can't be bothered. I would have returned tomorrow and had to do those 15 seconds on top of tomorrow's work. And it always, always behooves me to do that last 15 seconds. And when I have done it, everything's fine. It's funny as well how most of the things we can't be bothered to do are relatively painless ones. They're things like washing clothes, folding clothes, sorry, washing dishes, extra rep at the gym, last 15 seconds of that minute. They're all things that I won't suffer for doing. I won't struggle for doing. And again, that's the thing with can't be bothered. It's not necessarily just as much as it's not I'm not able to do this thing. It's also, I don't fear it. It's not something that I'm scared to do. I haven't, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's not something that's going to impact me hugely negatively as I do it. I'm not going to suffer. That's the word I'm looking for. I'm not going to suffer while I do this thing. It's just going to be inconvenient and boring and I'd just rather not. But those aren't good enough reasons for me to deny myself future peace of mind. They're just not, frankly. If I stack it up, they're just not. And in future, when I encounter this problem again, I'm going to wish I'd done it before. Now, those aren't necessarily, for me, the motivating factors for why I would turn Can't Be Bothered into might as well. They're not, because I, that's what I used to try. I used to think you're going to regret this later if you don't do it now. And that kind of doesn't have much, doesn't have much power over me, unfortunately. <laughs> but what does work is the idea that, A, when... I turn can't be bothered into might as well. It shows that I really care about myself, not just in this second and not this temporary gratification, but care about myself in a way that has long-term positive impacts. And B, I'm never going to regret the fact that I chose to act on this now. It's something that is going to be painless in the moment, might be inconvenient, but it's so worth doing immediately because the future version of myself is going to get to benefit. I don't have to be proud about it. No, I don't have to be happy about it. Sorry, I don't have to be happy about it. I have to jump up and clip my heels together, but I'll get it done. And that will be more than enough. So I'm not saying we have to do it every time. I'm not saying you're a bad person if you can't bother to do things. There will be things that I can't be bothered to do in future and I won't do them. And things are going to be fine whether I do or whether I don't. But the option is there for me to do them. The ability is there for me to do them. I care about myself enough to do them. And it's really actually a very nice feeling to be able to trust myself to do them. It's a really nice feeling to be able to trust yourself to take care of the things that might not be the most comfortable in the moment, but you know ultimately they're the right thing to do for yourself. It's, yeah, it's a really, it's a really, really lovely feeling and something that I really wish and want everyone to experience. Gain that kind of affirmation from yourself through your own actions is something that's really, really lovely for your self-esteem and really accessible. We can all do it. It's not beyond the realms of possibility for anyone. Absolutely anybody can do it at any time. Anyone can decide to. Not, it's not a question of morality. You're not a good person or a bad person if you do or you don't. But the benefits of it have been really wonderful for me. So it's going to be something that I continue to do and continue to try and do and carry across all areas because it's been really helpful. That's all for me today. Yeah, I hope that one made sense. I actually was going to talk about something else today, but I changed last minute because I had this thought 
and thought, do you know what? Let me share this one right now. So again, thank you for being a community that allows me to do that. I love how safe I feel in just being able to share whatever I'm thinking about at that time. Genuinely, I never take it for granted. I appreciate you very, very much. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you for listening. Whatever you're doing this week, I hope you have a wonderful one.